Uh, I was doing a radio show with, with Chuck, and, and he, he asked me, hey, Coach, about the, he said, rickety ride. I said, no, it's, it's, it's a raggedy ride. It's better than a smooth walk. And that's what my mentor used to talk about. And that means, you know, if, if I'm a guy over here and uh, I got a little jalopy and it, it barely runs, and, uh, and let's say Pat, for instance, Pat's cool. We got a smooth walk. He ain't got no car. If he got to go 50 miles, guess what? He better jump in my raggedy ride or he can walk it. So uh, when you talk about this game here, I thought it was a game that uh, defense won in the end. Uh, uh, hats off to, to Mike uh, Bolton and what he's doing with that basketball team. You know, they came over here uh, with two of their better players not playing, and uh, but he found some other guys that really came out and, and played uh, extremely well. Uh, they started off the game fast, and uh, and even as they finish up the half fast. Uh, but you know, I always say basketball is a game of of runs, and and it's not a 20-minute game; it's a 40-minute game. I thought our defense was totally different in the second half. I thought we uh, really uh, kind of ranched it up and, and really made fatigue a factor going down the stretch. Uh, uh, and we had guys that make plays, and guys been in those moments before. And the question was asked, hey, you've been in so many games like that. Uh, but you look at the guys that were out there that are making the plays. Look at Trey Thompson. Uh, he makes a big block before he even gets that rebound going down the stretch. Uh, we just we were fortunate right there. They had two tips at the ball, and, and I don't know, some angel up there, but it just kept that ball out, and, uh, and we were able to get the win. Uh, so it's, it's a big win for us uh, uh, as we move forward in this season. Open up some questions. We'll start right down here in front of Bob. Thanks, Patrick. I appreciate that on your last uh, deals. Um, hey, Mike, your last five wins have all basically been one possession games. Well, what's been the key to that? And just, I don't know, does that age you quicker? Or just how, how, as a coach, how do you deal with that? Whatever, every game seems to be going down to the wire. Well, it just, you know, it, it's, you know, you got to win games like that, Bob. I mean, I've been involved in a lot of games that have been close. And, uh, I got to say right now, the key is right now guys having pause. They don't panic. As a matter of fact, I may be getting uh, frantic on the, on the sideline, but they'll look at me and say, Coach, we got Trey said it, Anton said it, Daryl said it, Coach, we got this. And true enough, they go out and uh, they got multiple stops going down the stretch. Uh, uh, what can I say? You know, the teams that we're playing, I mean, it's it's not a whole lot of difference between the teams when you, when you think about it. Uh, uh, Oklahoma State is a very good basketball team. We think we're a very good basketball team. We didn't shoot the ball well, especially in the first half. Uh, they shot over 50% in the first half, but in the second half, they shot 22%. So that tells me we came out with the right mindset. Our offense wasn't as efficient as it always has been, uh, but our defense was, was really good. And guys coming off the bench giving us some big, big minutes. Uh, we know that Darrell comes off the bench and uh, he gets 22 points. He's the only guy in double figures. But how about those other contributors? Uh, a big tip in by Orlando Cook. Uh, just some of the little things. C.J. Jones, two big threes in it uh, that he knocks down. Uh, Darius Hall, uh, a big steal. You know, after we miss a shot, he steal it and put it back in. Uh, so you got more guys, multiple guys that are – our bench is really developing. And I think that's is starting to become a factor with this basketball team. To your left, Coach, second row, Scott. Coach, how, how important were, were Dustin and Trey, not only in this game, but, but both wins this week? I, I thought Dustin Thomas was really big. He had 10, 10 rebounds probably his career. Almost had a double-double. And, uh, and for a guy that two games ago didn't even play, you know, the, the last couple of games he's really stepped up and, and, uh, and has played well for us, you know. Uh, and we got to have those guys step up and play. But Trey, he's been here four years, so it's, it's his time. You know, obviously Daniel, we know he's a very, very talented kid. And, uh, <clears throat> but at the same time, I just think with Trey, his basketball IQ uh, it just surpasses a lot of guys out on that floor. And he's like a coach out on the floor. And he makes a lot of things a lot easier, you know, for other guys. And just his, you know, his body, his size out there and uh, the things he does defensively, offensively, screening, his passing, uh, just his presence. He had two big steals. I think uh, one or two, three steals in that game going down the stretch. So, and every all that stuff adds up. And, and Daniel, uh, what can I say about him? He sat there. Uh, all those minutes, once he got that fourth foul, I pulled him out. And, and right there at the end, we, we needed a size guy in there. And uh, Oklahoma State pressed us. And Tyne got the ball. He had a three on two. He took the shot. And, uh, and, and, and thank God I had him in there because he's a size guy that, that had energy. He was able to tip the ball in for the game-winning shot. So uh, this is a team where each and every night is going to be somebody different to step up. All the way to the right, to the right Yeah, Coach, um, 
a lot of stoppages, reviews. It got uh, it got really mucky out there. Uh, talk about how your guys kind of fought through all that going on, and it just was a very physical game as well. Well, it, it, uh, knowing it was going to be a physical game, Oklahoma State, their team that really attacked the glass. Uh, I'm glad to see that. It looked like we neutralized. You know, they had four, 13 uh, offensive rebounds. We actually had 14, uh, but that's what they do. They attack that glass, and we know we had to put some bodies on some people. And uh, Again, we sh- I think we shot 23. We shot. They shot 23 free throws. We shoot 18. And and as you alluded to, there's a lot of stoppage. So, a lot of stop and go. And so uh, I think that's even how the game went. It was kind of kind of spurt. It was real sp- some spurts there. Uh, uh, but that's you know they called it the way, and you got to play it that way. Second round to your last coach. Coach Anton had six assists and zero turnovers today. He led your team. Game high, six assists. Last three games, all victories by the Hogs, he's had 15 assists and only two turnovers. Can you talk about the change in him or what, what he's doing right now, stepping up to, to help lead this team as a facilitator? Well, he's one of the leaders and he wants to win. I think, you know, one of the things I, I asked him to do is uh, try to facilitate and make other people better. You know, uh, you know, because you, you have so many guys that you only got one basketball. Uh, when you got guys like Barford and Macon and a big guy like Daniel Gafford, now you got some options out there. Even Dustin Thomas, you got options to give the guys the ball and get your assist and be a playmaker. And I think he's starting to do that. He has a lot of open looks today that Norman and Tom Beard knocks down. He 0 for six. As a matter of fact, he turned some down because their zone was wide open. And uh, but when you don't make shots, guys get a little tentative. And I thought we did that. Uh, CJ comes out and knocks a couple of down that really opened it up for us but uh, but Tom just playing with his heart he, he's he, he, to me he, I always say quite him he's a probably a miniature uh, Corey Beck I always thought he had one he has that grit about him and uh, he's playing playing to win that's all I can say he's playing to win you had two head coaches in here today, Coach Sutton and Coach Richardson, who have over 1,300 wins and have meant a lot to the university. Does it make it uh, more special when they're in the building together? Oh, it's fabulous. I, you know, I, I heard them over the speaker call the names out, and uh, and you can just tell by the tremendous uh, applause, uh, standing ovation, uh, what these guys meant to Arkansas basketball, and uh, and having an opportunity to come here. With Coach Richardson after Coach Sutton, uh, obviously he set everything in motion. You know, with uh, with the triplets and just the winning way. You know, the toughness in Barnhill, one of the toughest places to play, uh, sellouts after sellouts. And so for them to come and be here on that occasion, of course, and I work with Coach Richardson, so uh, and I experienced that with him. And so, but to have those guys here, Hall of Fame coaches, uh, that's special. That 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 is really really special. And it was special to our guys as well. Jalen's been really consistent lately. Tonight he kind of struggled. Was that just a f- factor of just that happens, or was it is it his minutes, or was it something Oklahoma State did? Okay. When you say struggle, he struggled shooting the ball. Shoot ball, yes, sir. Okay. He struggled defensively. No, sir. No, I didn't think so. So he didn't struggle. He just had an off night shooting the basketball. I mean, he just went for twenty something the other day. Uh, so every night it ain't gonna be that guy. It may be somebody else. So I don't look at him struggling. I just look at it as him maybe not knocking some shots down. And and let's say you got to remember now, Oklahoma State has something to do with that. Maybe he was their target. They were gonna let him or Daniel. And so it allowed you know Daryl to go off. Allowed CJ to you know to make some plays. And Oklahoma State's a good defense team. A good team. Uh, you know, Daryl didn't score over there last year. He's 0 for 8 today. Obviously, a whole lot better for him and for you. So how big was it that Daryl scored like that and didn't have another struggle? I thought it was big for us. I, you know, we were down. I mean, double figures went we? almost 16, 17. I don't know how far we went down but uh, in that first half. But uh, he came down. He like back-to-back threes. We were down 13 before you know it. You know, we got the lead down in single digits in the first half. And uh, so he, he was big in, in a lot of ways. And uh, in the second half, uh, he got he got to the free throw line a few times. So, no, his scoring was uh, was big because you got to have somebody to draw to those guys. And he had a couple of nice dishes to guys, uh, assists. You know, some guys made the shot, some guys didn't make the shot. But he had a nice couple of assists. I know he gave Dustin Thomas one that as the lead was going back and forth. So, uh, But it was a hard-fought game. You know, it wasn't a thing of beauty, but I thought it was two teams teams that uh, were playing with their hearts. They played hard. It was down in front of OSU's bench. I don't know how good. It, it's when they call it the foul and the technical on Jalen. It looked like the OSU player, you know, did that, and then they called a foul. I assume, you know, Jalen was upset about that. What, what was your view of that, and what, what happened on the technical? I didn't see. I just saw him in front of the guy, and just like you just alluded to it, I just, I thought it was, it was a play on, really, to tell you the truth. And, uh, 
and, and talk to Jalen. I don't know if he said that he probably had an expression. I know I was disgusted down there when when it took place when the when the foul was called. I was, and uh, but in terms of what took place and you know a lot of talking was going on out there, and so maybe the the officials he was going to get the next guy, and Jalen happened to be that next guy. Any more questions for coach? All right, thank you. Yes. All right. <laughs>